Okay. Carlos, get by the camera so we could what? roll. It's it's in focus and everything? Yeah. Okay. I started here. Tell me when. Hold on. You started? Okay. Just, uh, just come on. Just sit down. Uh, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Carlos Figueroa. Okay. I can't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it on. That's what I hate about beats is you have to, t- even if you're using the cord, you have to turn them on. Uh, yo, what, what, how's everyone doing tonight? <laughs> well, we're doing good. I'm doing good. I'm feeling good. We are wearing the same uh, outfit picks. Okay. Um, how do we feel? What? No, this is actually a genuine question. I'm in a weird point in life where, like, in, in high school, you know, you, you take pics for, for IG, for Instagram. Like, it's a, like it's almost like a challenge of who could get, like, the flyest pictures, right? Then, like, you you know, you post maybe once a week, maybe a couple times. Some people don't, but, like, this is the game I was playing at least. You post once a week. You try to make it funny. You try to – you put your own take on it, your own spin, right? There's no reason behind the post, uh, whereas some people use social media as, like, a – like an update, like, hey, look into my life, right? What's the balance that you should aim for now or that I should aim for now? Like where I'm almost lost in like where, where, what do I post on there? I guess I think you should just do what makes you happy. You son of a, uh, (sighs) when did, I guess my question is when does social media stop being fun? Mm. Is this the most? This is is too Gen Z. No, I, I think this is the most serious episode of the pod. And then and then we cut in music. That <laughs> don't chop that. that, 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 that. Hey. And then we cut back. And then it's oh, let's do like a who's that one guy who does midnight gospel? Um, beard. Yeah, I don't know. That's this episode. Anyway, yeah. I mean, like, I don't know. You know what's weird? I really care about Instagram now. Really. Not care about, like, I don't, like, but it's one of those things where it's, like, um, I don't, like, need the likes, but if I got a post with, like, four likes, I would delete it. (laughs) I would, I would not, I would not do it. I don't, like, need the followers, but if the numbers started going down a lot, I would, I would delete the app. Yeah, exactly. So, you get what I'm saying. Well, it's just, like, I don't know. I don't know why we're posting it. I guess just to stay relevant. But what... It's not a. It's not even about relevant because it's more for us now. Like, what are we, what are we posting? What do we aim to post? What do we aim to get across in our post? Uh, I guess like who we are, but it's like because. But then sometimes I worry. Like, is it who? That's we are? not who I am. I'm posting reels from from shows, crowd like cheap crowd work reels. Um, I'm posting like p- random pictures now. I just don't get it anymore. I think the whole point of it is. Like if I wasn't doing stand up, if I was just a normal person, I would not be on social media at all. Really? There was a point for like six months where I deleted everything, maybe f- four or five months into doing stand up. You think we're lost in the system? I think we're we're just trying to play a game that's not about us anymore. It's for and we're, and we're trying to see where we fit in now. I think maybe. I don't know. It stopped being ironic. Well, what do you mean? Like it was funny or it was like a joke to like do some of the stuff we do now. But now it's like, like I would never, like I, w- I remember like we all wanted to be kid YouTubers as a kid and all the promo and all that other stuff. Like if I saw me, like if I was just working a nine to five and I saw someone trying to be a comic and post on this. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Well, that's the thing. They make fun of it until it happens. Yeah. But then if it never happens, how ridiculous do you think people think we look when they, they're like, Oh, another podcast episode. This is the 10th week in a row with 40 v- listeners, 40 watchers. Yeah. They probably think we're insane. Well, they think we're insane, but it's also stupid. weird. Everyone wants stupid. to do it. Yeah. And then they hit you up. Hey man, when do I get to be on your little podcast? It's like, no, we take this a little seriously. 
Yeah. And also, like, just like, why would you have nothing to offer? There's some people that do, and it just, we'll get to them eventually after friends. But <laughs> there's other people where it's like, like some people were the oh you're a comic oh I'm pretty funny and it's like you're not that kind of makes us look bad and we're not we're not saying it's like like oh well what can you give us we're not going to give you anything if you can't give us it's just like we're not really friends why do you want to be on this all of a sudden I know also but, you laugh at it yeah it's also like I don't know people don't people here's what I'm learning more and more it's about life is or not life but just like uh, people like people that have something to offer. And whether that's like uh, money, whether that's power, whether that's social like tokens, whether that's like, um, I don't know, makes them look good or just feel good. Anything. We're all getting something from each other. And it's weird because it, people almost need to be told what they are getting from people. Or like like this, we could nothing can change. Nothing can change from today overnight. Uh, to tomorrow except overnight we go viral nothing can change we'd still put out bad podcasts sometimes we'd still have really good episodes we'd still have episodes that are good we'd still have potential whatever or we're just wasting time but then something changes where they go oh this is what we're supposed to like this is what is liked and then they watch it and they go okay I kind of get it I don't, it's not for me but I get it and then they it becomes like in their world what I what I take from that is that like everything everything is a give and take you know and if I'm giving something, obviously I'm going to be taking, like everything's conditional. Nothing comes for free. It comes on a term and condition. And we, you and I actually had, had this conversation like really early on in our friendship is like, you learn that like people leave your life because the, the conditions don't work anymore. Like there's no reason for them to be in there. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's it. You know, what's remember, crazy remember is, we had that conversation. No, no. Yeah. I, I almost forgot about that. It's so weird. Uh, here, I'm going to jump all over. So I don't want okay. to, but, um, no, just jump, just jump. No, no. I just want to finish this thought before because we, we can, but, um, that is true. And what I mean by that is like the conditional part of like, if you don't have anything to offer, then you're not going to stick around. Yeah. And, and I know that might sound bad. Like, are you using your friends or anything like that? But think of it this way. Why do you hang out with your friends? You hang out with them either. Cause they make you feel good. They make you laugh. They they comfort you. They're they're just a voice of reason. There's so many, but it's a gain, and you give too. So it's like a it's a, what is it called a symbiotic relationship or is that yeah yeah, yeah. that works. Yeah. Um, and it's it's weird too because at a certain point you just you go why am I going to this person or why am I and it's not always like a quantifiable gain. Sometimes it's just you enjoy their company, they enjoy yours. Other times it's for sure like oh this person. Uh, can grant me access to this social atmosphere and I could grant them access to this social atmosphere and that's yeah. why we hang out with each other. Mm -hmm. But um, other times, like I said, it's just like, oh, we're just good friends and we enjoy the, the, the time we spend with each other. But if, wrap, wrap up your thought. I was yeah. just trying to clarify. No, no, exactly. It, it, it's that. It's a, you know, they, they like you said, yeah, it is just that. It's not a quantifiable thing. It's just like, for some reason, when I'm around this person, I'm happier. When I'm around them, I feel good. Um, or, you know, or, or sometimes it's literally just like their cousin has like a thick pussy <laughs> and you're like, I want to go over house and see your cousin's, cousin's thick, <laughs> your cousin. Come on, let me come over to your house and see your cousin's thick pussy. Come on, let me see it. <laughs> she just started working out again. <laughs> no, but I, I think it's, uh, we can't have a serious conversation without like throwing something <laughs> without throwing in some thick pussy. <laughs> <laughs> thick pussy. Oh, did you hear that new Take Four episode? Yeah, man, it was great. But then they started talking, talking about, about thick, thick pussy. pussy. <laughs> hey, y'all, uh, that sounds like the new route next year. And it was Ice Spice 2023, 2024. Thick, thick pussy. <laughs> Yo, we're here with. It's spelled P S Y. You hear that new Thick Puss track? <laughs> Yo, the Thick Puss is on tour with Nikki. <laughs> That's gonna be crazy. Yeah. Wait. You no, okay, let, let's No, but let's, what I mean is it's also interesting. Here's another thing. Like what you said about like friendships also evolve and they go on. And it's weird too how um like that conversation if you wouldn't have brought that up, I that would eventually been like well, out like, of my mind. The the way I always think about it is like remember in high school um you have like this one class where like the class sucks, but you have like a cool group of friends in that class and you don't even hang out with them outside of the class. But like you have you're you're laughing the whole period. Mm -hmm. you're not doing any work you're just laughing the teacher gets upset at you guys but outside of that class you don't hang up that friendship is uh, not hang up hang out that friendship is conditional it's defined by on you guys being in that class mm -hmm. and it's not to say you guys aren't good friends it's just to say that 
we benefit we make each other's time better in this one moment where we don't want to be here and outside of that we have nothing to to provide for each other well there's so many it's like uh people make friends especially it happens a like lot work in friends yeah or college like friends or not even that just because you're like oh we like this thing it's weird um friendship friendships relationships whatever it is start off on like usually one thing whether that's Oh, you like this ba- type of music? I like this type of music. Oh, you like movie? This movie, or you like this person? I like that, or whatever. Or just you mean like just paths cross at right times. It's kind of confusing. There's not really an explanation sometimes, but I think it's also interesting how like because when we talked about that, yeah, that was like when you first meet people and you're like fit, almost unlocking who they are because there's always everyone has that same fucking presentable mask that everyone puts on where it's like, dude, like there's so many people that think they know us. Because yeah. they've talked to us, like two or, or three so times. many, and to put it the other uh, the other way around, there's so many people we think we know because we talk to them, or because we're around them, or because we're in the same vicinity for so long, and we fucking. And don't they know. still call me Daniel. You know how many people think my name is Daniel? What's up, Danny? <laughs> and they still call me Thick Pussy. <laughs> no, um, but I get what you're saying though. Like you don't know know them, and that's and well, that's why like I when you. Uh, and maybe I, I need to, I told, I talked with someone recently and I was like, uh, I need to stop doing this. And I talked with them about it and they're like, no, cause we just like that. And the thing is, I don't, I get kind of bored with the, with the, oh, you like this thing. You like that. I, I also can do those conversations, but I almost think like, I like knowing what people think about. I like knowing, um, how did they get to this? Like, what's your background? You what's your here? family? Yeah. Like, what's what, what's a significant moment to you? What's something, like, that crosses your mind all the time? And then also, like, I just like being able to talk to people that, like, have a type of uh, perspective that I'm like, what the fuck? I wouldn't have never thought well, of I I always say I don't trust someone that doesn't hate something. Mm. What, do you, what do you mean? Like, uh, there should be something that pisses you off. Something that just makes your blood... If you don't get upset at something if nothing irks you then you're not paying attention enough or like you don't care enough about the little things if if someone in the if you don't know enough about the world to pick one thing oh my god oh my god (laughs) she came in at the worst episode she's not gonna like this episode oh my god holy shit was that the first time she's ever been on camera no she showed her tattoo once well chooch is here Just, just, just to wrap up my thought yeah um if there's not something that you hate, it's because you're not you don't care enough about the world or like the things around you to pay attention yeah. to something that is you shouldn't like everything. You shouldn't be okay with everything. Or you're not going to be. And if for some reason you do you feel like you don't hate something, it's because again, you don't care enough. And I want you to care enough to hate something. So I don't know if I did a good job of, of pinpointing. No, that no, I, I get that. And that's that's what I'm saying also. Like I would I like um the reason why I probably don't like someone is because they don't think. And what I mean by that is it's not literally like you don't have thoughts in your head. I, I go like when you're alone, when you're not like influenced by people, when you're not like influenced by culture, the world, whatever it is, when you're just alone in your car and tra- or just just by yourself, whatever it means. You when just you're driving up. to work. Yeah. Like what goes through your head? And that's my thing. So it, it's weird. Like I would have never thought of like, oh, if someone doesn't hate anything, that can't be my person. But it's, it is a valid reason for it, thinking. It's not even like a... Uh, like that's my like basis for fr- it's just like it's a red flag it's like oh there's nothing that pisses you off there's nothing in this world that is like you're completely even if it's something stupid like i hate mustard mustard just pisses me off it it tastes dark it the color's weird i hate it what is it, tasting dark you know when it lingers in the back of your throat oh like rum yeah like whiskey and rum, different types of alcohols mm-hmm. taste dark where it just like it sits Mm-hmm. And doesn't go away, dude. I had horseradish tastes dark to me. Yesterday, I had, coke I had, I tastes had dark. Pretty, pre- yeah, you're right. I had a pretty big show, and afterwards we took tequila shots. And for the record, I hate tequila. No, he doesn't. Fucking hate it. Like when I drink it, I legit sometimes have to like compromise and go, "Don't throw up." And if you do, run. I, I it makes me want to puke. It makes me want to fucking shit for some reason. I immediately after drinking it, I don't know why. It's I, I, it just literally is poison, um, and my body just reacts. But Can, can we talk about that though? How much time do we have? Before We're we 15 restart? minutes in. Should we pause it now? Get Chucha Mike. Do you want it? And then. Oh yeah. Okay. Going so we're gonna keep. We're gonna keep it going. On. The episode's not done, but we're gonna pause everything. Okay. Then, okay. Pause. Pause. Chucha, can you pause the camera? Pause the camera. 
Well, just press the red button. We're going to just cut it. No. Give it to me. Give it. Okay. Okay. Ready? One. No, no, no. Okay. Tell me. One. Two. two. Three. He just had I his lost headphones. The follower. On. Who just, pl- just start recording. One, two, three. All right. We're here. We're back. Chooch Choo is plugged in now. I we're lost good. The follower. It happens. They come and go. Yeah, but we can't control. Uh, we started this episode talking about how unimportant social media was. Yeah, but I also told you that I care about it too much. <sighs> it's situated. We, uh, we can roll for like 15 minutes here and then we'll, we'll call it an episode. No, it's just 30. But we have to get to mic drop. I know, we have, well, how much time do we have? It's, ba- it's 8.23 right now. Oh, after. Well, just just put the headphones in. Let's go. It's yours. Fuck. Get situated, dude. We we just killed a minute right now. Oh my god. I didn't see, but that happened. I tried to rush through it right now. Um. So Chooch is back. Chooch is back. Chooch. Have you seen Barbie? No, I haven't seen Barbie. Okay, we're gonna do Barbie spoilers. <laughs> You've seen Barbie? Seen it. I lived it. Okay, you... The no, first okay, you, you mean to tell me you spent all day hanging out with your friends and you guys didn't go see a movie? No, I was at the library for like a long time. Then what'd you do with your friends? We literally... They In the microphone, Juj. They waited for me at the library and then we went to go get sandwiches and that was it. That's it? That's it. From where? Where'd you get sandwiches? Jersey Mike's. Mike's way? Mike's way. Was Mike there? No. <laughs> it's so gross. <laughs> So it's your your first week of school. Second week. Second week of school. How do you feel back in school? Sad. Why? Why? I hate school. Yeah, but it's your oh, you have senioritis. Mm Mm-hmm. And dude, well, trust me. Well, I'm sad because I know like the easy part is over. Like the first two weeks are easy, and then the rest it just goes downhill from here. I thought senior year was like the easiest year ever because you work so hard in junior year. I don't know. I I signed myself up for hard classes. I don't know why. I didn't have a senior year. Chooch, why would you do that? You don't have to. Your college isn't gonna give a it's fuck about this year. It's because last year I should have taken one more AP class, and my I had all A's, but my class rank went down to like thirty, and I I wanted to go back up to twenty, so I had to do another AP class. I didn't have year. a senior year. Oh fuck! You shouldn't have said that, Chooch. Not D. you sad. Did you fart? No, it was the throat thing. <laughs> I know, but it sounded like a fart, didn't it? Yeah, um, but huge. What were we gonna say? What What is what's your stance on? Uh, you know how grandpas uh, they always have a wife that's like way too young for them. Yeah, and they're like, wait, you're sixty, and but grandma's like twenty three. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was way too young. <laughs> 16, 23. No, but that's always the second wife. We're talking about like OGs. That OG, are like with. your grandma, grandpa, grandpas. They've Didn't been married. Huh? Well, I didn't know my grandpa. That's true. Oh, you really didn't. Fuck. Huh? I remember the day my he? I remember the day my grandpa died. Let's just keep it a sad let's episode. Not. This is a sad episode. Okay. I remember the. Okay. Let's just lean into it. I remember into it. Yeah. The We're day my, the day my grandpa died, I was in kindergarten. Oh fuck. And uh, I had a Batman backpack, but um. So wait, what does that have to do with? No, so I wake up, and a bunch of uncles that I hadn't seen in a while were like, everyone was in my living room, and I go downstairs, and my dad's like, "Hey, gloomy just, day." No, might have been. It was early, but my my dad is like, "Hey, buddy, just just start getting ready for school." So I go upstairs, shower, get ready for school, and then I come downstairs with my backpack on. My I used to wear red Converse every day. All I wore was red Converse, and. Um, I, I is go, this a fit check? Yeah. <laughs> You're talking about your backpack and your camera? So my dad like pulls me into like the office, like the side room. He's like, hey, I just I just want to let you know um, your 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 grandpa died and um, uh, he, he's not here with us anymore. I don't remember exactly what he said, but like he pulled me aside and just let me know that my grandpa died. And um, then he walked me to school and like he, he gave me a big hug right there because he, he was sitting on the chair talking to me like this. And I just had my backpack and he like held my hands and then he pulled me in and gave me a hug and then he walked me to school. And that day, um, like earlier in the week, we had pre-ordered the the new Arkham Asylum game. So after school, he took me to, to go get the Batman Arkham Asylum. And that's a really good game. Yeah, it was the start of greatness. 
It's, it's a day to get three great game run. So we lost my grandpa, but you know. Mm-hmm. Wait, so you didn't know your grandpa at all? Well, because I was in kindergarten. She was probably like three or two. Two or three, yeah. Hmm. But then wait, then who do, whose death affected you the most, Church? My grandma's. Were you close to your grandma? Yeah. Oh. She died. Not, not not the grandma that just recently died. The one that died like in 2011. Yeah, she died a couple years after my grandpa. Oh, so. Oh, wait, but then you were still a baby. She was, was probably like five, six. Yeah. But that one really hurt you? Why? She was like my babysitter. She raised us. Yeah. So my parents would work. Um, like they would they were like just starting out in their job. So they would work like pretty rough hours. So my originally we would like go live with my grandma for like three days a week uh like three four days a week and then because we weren't really going to school yeah we we were little but then once we started going to school and stuff uh my grandma didn't know how to drive lived in the states for like god knows how long she didn't know how to drive but um we were supposed to go to the elementary school all the way over there because they had a dual immersion thing but anyways so uh once we started going to school my grandma just lived with us during the week and she took care of me and my sister and then on the weekends we would take her or she would go li- live at her place. But um, she raised us like up until she passed away. Yeah. You cried when she died? Mm-hmm. They, did they tell you? They, did they sit you down? They, it, my mom took me and my sister into her room, my, si- my mom's room, and then she told us. I, I, was, I had to get pulled out of class. Really? I got pulled out of class and... I you might, did? Re- yeah, I was in school. I might remember this. You weren't in school yet, Chooch. Uh uh-uh. uh. I might remember this wrong, but I swear to God, my second grade teacher, I was in a combo class of second and third grade. Um, so my the teacher pulls me aside. She's like, hey, Diego, they, they just called to send you home. Uh, they said your grandma died. And I was like, oh. I honestly, I don't think she should be the one that like broke the news to me. But um, she might not fucked. have broke, she might have just said, um, like something's wrong with your grandma, but I swear to God, she broke the news to me and asked me, "Is it the one that always like walks you to school?" And I was like, "Yeah, that's the one." Sad, right? And then I just walked out of class. But Ugh. she might not have broke the news to me. No way, she broke the news to me. But for some reason in my mind, I remember her telling me that my grandma. Died. Maybe it was just her energy. Like, it's your grandma. It's not good. <laughs> also, this is what's crazy. Like, my grandma was like. It's recording, before? right? It's 100 percent recording. Yeah, like yeah. a week before she died, she was like perfectly fine. She was. I remember the last time I saw my grandma. I yeah. don't. We dro- I didn't see her in the hospital. No, I didn't see her in the hospital. I remember the last time I I like spoke to her word for word. It was off of Third Street. She used to live on this apartment off of Third Street in Chula Vista, and we went to go drop her off on a Thursday night, and she had a bad cough, and my dad had been telling her like, "Hey, you should go get that checked out." And she was like, no, it's okay. Your your brother's going to, my uncle, was, was going to take me to the doctor. We'll, we'll probably, like, it'll be all right. And we were parked right next to the tree, and we're, we could, like, see her up in, into the apartment. She's like, all right, I'm, I'm going to take off. Bye. Thank you for dropping me off. Uh, hugs my dad, kisses me on the forehead, and wa- walks to the apartment. And that was the last time I saw her. Because that night, uh, or maybe the next day or something, they took her to the, to the doctor. She had really bad pneumonia because she had a bad cough. And uh, it ended up being really bad pneumonia. She didn't smoke though, right? That doesn't al- that's not always the case for an pneumo- well, usually pneumonia. Usually, that's what makes it worse. Oh yeah, just anything with your lungs that makes it worse. But um, they walked her or they took her to the doctor. It was really bad pneumonia. They had to like enter her into the hospital, and it just progressed worse and worse. And within a week. No, like so they took her to the hospital. That like, I think it was a Friday. They took her to the hospital, and because we Monday? dropped her off on Thursday. Yeah, Monday she croaked. Jesus. Yeah, it's always sad when like a grandparent. Young, dies. like uh, I remember doing puzzles in the waiting room. I like, want a bunch of us were in that waiting room at the hospital. They had like a separate one for us. Uh, I want to say she died at sixty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's my, young, dude. My, I think my grandma, fifty late fifties, maybe or maybe so I don't know she made it to sixty. I remember her uh, when Michael Jackson died. Uh, she was like, I outlived Michael Jackson. I remember the day Michael Jackson died mm-hmm. so vividly too. I came from school. Uh, isn't that weird? No, like I, no, we are. We're gonna go back to being serious. Right? June June twenty fifth, two thousand nine. Yeah, I remember that day is baked into my memory. We, we went. I went home. They were in the living room. CNN was on. I was like, what? CNN, dude. They covered the whole day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got sad. Uh, I went upstairs 
and I made a character that looked just like him in Guitar Hero World Tour. I, I remember just sitting there. I was like, fuck. It was anorexic. Yeah, yeah. He, he's, dude, you know what's crazy? One of the scariest dreams I ever had was about Michael Jackson. He made me sit on his lap. And I was like, your face. I used oh. to, one of my like first bits that I tried writing for stand-up was like, um, I was like such a, I know, I, I, was, I was like a Michael Jackson defender. I was like, I know Michael Jackson didn't touch those kids because I was such a big Michael Jackson fan that I would have been the first one in line to get touched. But I was, I was too young. Good news, bad news for that. Just probably quick. bad news. Yeah, it was um, a bad bit. I, uh, I don't know. Yeah, death is pretty insane. You know what's crazy? Is the hospital thing that you're mentioning. Mm-hmm. I remember I was really. You know when you're young and you're just kind of like watching things happen and you kind of you pick up on emotions and tones, but you can't even when. Adults are saying shit. The words aren't like trans. It's not registering that yeah. like it's bad. Well, it's registering that it's bad, but you don't get. I remember. Uh, oh, we're never gonna see grandma again. Well, so this time my aunt, um, my aunt was my aunt's been sick pretty much her whole life. Like when when she was born, they told they told them she was she was not gonna make it to like one. Then she, when she made it past that, they're like, okay, six, like maybe to nine, she'll make it if she's really lucky. That she had mo- she, and the reason why that is is she was born with like be- no. She had kidneys, but they were fucked. So they, she was pretty much living mo- majority of her life with no kidneys. Mm-hmm. It was bad. Like she didn't really make a lot of good choices. Um, it also just some things didn't work out. She was always in and out of surgeries, on dialysis her lo- whole life. Drained. There's days where she was just like her body was just drained, and she would just sit there. She also was like really bad on drugs at one point. She just progressively got more and more on drugs. Mm-hmm. But there was a point in her life when she was able to handle herself and take care of things and like live life. And uh, she got pregnant at one point, and she had like a she was pregnant. And there was one day we my mom woke me up in the middle of the night. I don't know why, or I don't get the reason if it was the bus, but somehow we get there um, to the hospital, and everyone's in the the waiting room. And um, I remember like my mom coming out from from the the and room. This is your mom's sister. Yeah, yeah, my mom's sister. And she was just crying really hard, and she was just holding me. And you're still like, what's wrong? You're like, I don't, you you don't know. Um, and from my memory, I remember what they were saying. They, were, they just kept saying like, she's so small. She's so small. They keep repeating that over and over again. And then I got in the, the waiting room and I don't know if this is a dream or this is made up and I don't, I, it, um, it's one of those things that like, it doesn't matter if it really happened or not. Cause it's how you remember it. Well, oh, so here's You're so little, here's you just remember it. a direct memory that I have. I go into the waiting room and, uh, one of my cousins, his name's Oliver. We, we called, we would, at that time when I was a baby, you give each other nicknames. We called him boo boo. And I'm I'm holding him. No, no, th- he's holding the baby. And um, I remember I tried to talk to my aunt or something. And she just she was just like she wouldn't talk or do anything. And we left. And like obviously as time goes on, I don't know if she told us in the car, but she was like, yeah, the baby was dead. Like the baby was like it, it died. Like she's not gonna have a kid. Because I remember going like, oh, like w- are, are we gonna see it when it comes home? Or like oh, we can plan stuff. And she's like, no, the baby's dead. And that was like one of the first instances where I was like, holy shit, like. Um, it, it's kind of crazy. I don't know. It, it always feels, and someone told me this yesterday. It's like uh, whenever bad moments happen or good moments, you kind of wish they were like spread out. But it's usually like there's just times that are just bad. And it's back to back to back. Bad, bad, bad. And then there's also times where it's like really good. And it's weird. Now I've kind of gotten to a place where like not romanticize bad, but like it, when there's things that are really bad and there's times where like I just feel like shit or there's events that take place, I'm like, this is worth it for something. This is, I'm going through this so that tomorrow's events can get better. And like, I don't know, like, um, it's a weird way. And I think that's the only way you can look at it. That, yeah, there's no, like, we like to think that life is balanced and th- things happen like fairly. It's like, yeah, like we said earlier, things are give and take, but it's not always an equal amount of give and take, especially in those, those like moments of like good and bad. So yeah, that that's so sad, man. Yeah, well, it's it's pretty it's pretty crazy sometimes when I think about it because like yeah I don't know if she, if she was dead I don't know why she let they let him hold the baby but still I I don't know I think people were just like it's pretty insane but I don't know in that same vein like well not to that extent but like uh, there you just get clumps where it's bad and a few weeks ago it was pretty bad like uh, with just a lot of stuff with family stuff with stand up stuff with my job there's. Just, Moments in time where like this is just like a shitty time, 
that you just have to deal with. Head down. Yeah. And then, like, then we go to moments. Like, I don't know. The pa- I've had a good run the past few days. Really, really good run. We're almost, like, so good to, like, if I just, if if I was third person hearing me describe these things to someone else and, like, was saying the beats and the things that happen, I think people would be like, okay, you're exaggerating or you're making it up or you're, even me, when it's happening, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, this, this is, like, real. this is, like, I wish they said this and then they say that exact thing. It's, like, like you know, when you, when you have, uh, like, like, uh, deja vu. not deja vu, you have arguments. And then you're in the shower the next day and you're like, man, I should have said that. You say all those things. Yeah. And like, I, it's just been a good run. Like, uh, yesterday I had a really big show and it went really well. And specifically it went really well, um, because I did really well. And I wasn't the only reason there a lot of people, it was a ensemble type thing. And I think a lot of people played their roles well, but from the feedback I got and from what I heard, um, I mean, even the people on it, they were like, yeah, it was you, you carried it pretty much, or you did really well, or you did that. And you feel so good because the people that are, not only it's your peers, but it's other people that are above you going, like, that was amazing. Yeah. Which, that's like all you want to hear. 100%. You, no, yesterday was, was really big. I'm actually very proud of you, dude. I know I've been telling you nonstop since last night. I'm so proud of you. You stepped up right, like, at the moment that you needed to. I mean, there's no... You can't write a better a better opportunity than that. I'm really proud of you. To give to give context and also fucking they're not gonna watch this. Of all people, they're not no, gonna watch I, I you don't have to say anything. I, 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 no, I was gonna say like the well so we we did a show, a bigger show that came down from LA with people that are actual comics who get paid to do comedy, who tour, who open for big acts, that do all this. And the show was uh it, it's um it's not a regular stand up comedy show. It's a it's a comedy show where it's uh it's it's court case va- based. Think it's of, variety. It's just a variety. Yeah, it's show. a variety, it's a variety show. show. Think of like uh, Jerry Springer meets Law and Order. So it's a court case type show, but it's like it's a lot of shit going on, a lot of interjections. And then we had a case, and like yeah, I, I got to I got to be one of the main parts in it, and I did really well. The stuff I wrote, the stuff I riffed, just performance wise, it went really really well. And you hit your flow, st- dude. I'm telling you, when you got there and you said, "I'm gonna stand." And they're like, I mean, go for it. I as soon as you said, I'm gonna stand. I knew, like, oh, he's on. This is it. He's taking control of the situation. You know when you could just tell someone's taking control of the situation, and no one else could take it from them. I knew it was over, dude. I was so proud of you. It's such a weird thing too, because it's like, yeah, like that was that. I don't think I could have imagined it better. I don't think I could have imagined it better, and it went so well. And then now you're just like, I've just let myself enjoy it, because there's been other times where I just don't. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know what I'm saying, Chooch. Yeah. You ever have those moments? She just checked out. Yeah. She's on her phone. What? What drive? What? What? what here. What? Ask Chooch. You know how we were saying like the the two questions, like your red flag and my thing. Okay, go. You ask yours, then I'll ask mine. Chooch, what do you think about? About. Yeah, just in general, like when you're alone by yourself, you're not around. Let's say like you wake up tomorrow and like th- obviously th- you're like all, all your family went on vacation. They're all gone. You're you're not working that day. Your friends are all busy. It's just you that whole day. You can do whatever you want, and you're just sitting at one point like you're just sitting there eating or driving somewhere. And what do you think about? Like what comes to your head when you're not influenced or when there's no reason for you to think about something? I'm just always stressed out about school. Actually, in the microphone, in the microphone. I'm always stressed out. But if it's not school, you're it's summer break. I'm thinking about what school I have to do next. Really? Why Why are you so like concerned with that? You didn't see Booksmart? I have places I want to be. Where do you want to be? On the East Coast. Oh, fuck. She's young. Why do you want to go to the East Coast so bad? Because I've never been there. <laughs> have you not been there? Didn't they, did you guys go to New York? I, I went to New go. York. Oh. But that's why you want to live in New York? Mm-hmm. Well, she didn't even say New York. I think she just... It's just the East Coast in general. Why the East Coast? What do you think? I think. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll let you say it. I'll let you say it. What? Well, I think um, she just wants to get like furthest away from here as possible. Really? Why? Are you just tired of it? I think if I don't get away, then I'll never leave. Mm-hmm. And you need to leave? Mm-hmm. What do you think will happen if you don't leave? Um, I'll feel like I never did what i wanted to do and what do you want to do leave 
No. No, but why? There, do you but there's leave? there's more to that. Yeah, you can't just want to leave. Like, what do you want? What's after leaving? You leave, then what? Uh, I don't know. She, her words, her world is still like really small, and I'm not saying mine is big, but like, you'll see. What do you think? Okay, so ideally, not because here you can still even if you're just saying it right now, like figuring it out. So you go to New York, the first. I don't want to go to New York. Oh, where do you want to go? Boston. Oh. Because of the schools in Boston? Oh, wait, the schools in Boston. Your dream school, which is? Boston University. Oh, it's Bo- <laughs> okay. Boston to Boston University. And you're going to live in the Boston apartment I have <laughs> on Boston Street. Um, so you're doing that. Well, then what's like a perfect year look like? Because um, you also don't care about anything. I'm having fun at school. What's having fun, though? What are you doing to have fun? I'm productive and not, I don't know. What are you producing that's productive? I'm getting schoolwork done. What happens when school's over? I have a good career. We're doing what? what? (laughs) I don't know. You need to, you haven't. I don't. What? I don't need to know anything right now. No, no, no. no. Yeah, you don't need to know. You don't need to know, but I wish you liked stuff. Because I don't know what you like at all, really. You don't need to know. I I know I don't need to know, but like it's so important to like like stuff because otherwise you're gonna you to say I don't. I don't. I'm not saying you do or don't, but uh, as far as like my interpretation, it seems like your interpretation. Okay, I'm not. You don't need to get defensive. I'm not telling I'm you not like getting defensive. It sounds a little defensive. Well, what do you like then? Don't worry about it. You don't want us to know. No. Well, okay, well, how come you don't... You don't want us to know because you think we'll judge it, or you just... No, it's I private? just like to keep it to myself. Huh. I guess what I'm trying to say is, like, the motivations for everything should come from, from what you like and what, what you're you're into, because at the end of the day, like, just, just having a good job for the sake of having a good job... And who knows? You could be, but I don't think that you'll find that fulfilling past a certain point. Like, yeah, it's important to be successful in the sense of, like, you could support yourself. You could support a family. You could live wherever I didn't say you like. I wanted to be that though. What do you What do you want to be? I want to do what makes me happy. And what makes you happy? Don't worry about it. <laughs> Is it murder? It's murder. What do you think about what we do? Honestly, if we weren't here and like, if like, uh, what was your friend's name? Sophia. Sophia. So if you and Sophia, Sophia just asked. Like, She's going to freak out when she listens to the episode. Let's say like two or three years pass and you check in with us. You come back from Boston and we're still doing similar stuff. Like what What? what do you think about it? Good for you. But why, you why is that? You're doing it because you want to. You don't worry because there, there's certain people like I know for a fact there's certain people in my life that go like, OK, well, this hurry up and like finish this. Like get over this, get on to the next phase. This is just a phase. There's there's definitely people where like uh and that's another reason why I don't want any like a coworkers or anyone else to find out about anything I do because it's like um I'm not gonna I don't I won't uh I won't compromise on anything. Yeah. And like if I wouldn't do this unless I thought there was some sort of potential in it. Or like I don't know, I can't live something that I don't wanna live or do something I don't wanna do. You know what I mean? I think right now, like where my family struggles in particular, is like a lot of what we do is it's unpaid, it's thankless. And they're like, well, why are you doing this? And um, I could also see how like it's ridiculous. Like I, the, the stuff we do for free. Yeah, but, we do a lot. We'll, um, we'll drive, we'll put so much miles on our car. We'll, we'll drive places. for we'll a twenty dollar spot. Yeah. A twenty five dollar a gig. But like in the grand scheme of things, is like that's the the steps that need to put in that need to be put in for for like the yeah it's the give to get to get yeah I don't know should we wrap it it's getting depressing we're like total probably around like forty five minutes into the episode let's just finish it out let's just run it out let's in. see what happens either it's not gonna I think it's either gonna get good or bad well like we, bad. we I'm just saying because I want to clean up and then we got to get going soon what, what time is it let's it's like forty five right now. Let's at least wrap up to some some degree. I think Chooch got a little defensive. No, I didn't. Why? Well, okay. Can I ask why? 
why is it so secretive with you? Not like secretive. It's just my own life, so it's my own. At, at some point, knowledge. do you do you think you're not gonna be around your family as much? Yeah. Wait, really? Mm-hmm. Why? Um, I don't know. Is that, does that come from anything though? Mm. Why are you looking at your phone? You're not even like talking to us. I'm trying to read something. Oh. Um, what was I going to say? We we could get out of here. Should we wrap it up? <laughs> oh, so we have to, should we talk about, <laughs> should we reference the, <laughs> the, the next, well, spice? I don't know. I'm just doing all this because at the end of the day, I don't want to have what a thick kids. <laughs> oh, no. No. <laughs> a cousin. <laughs> okay. Worst case scenario. Okay. Good news. Bad news. <laughs> should, should we end on good news? Bad news? Okay, good She's news. She's not having it. Dude, should, wait, do we make you mad? No. I feel like you're mad. <laughs> okay, new, okay, new rule on the pod. We can't ask Chooch yeah. Goblin personal questions. Let's just get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll cut 10 minutes out of this. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. And uh, before we before we, we stop, we just want to say August 25th. 25th Friday. Friday. Low, 6 to 9, six, 6 to 9 p.m. PM. Lower, Lower left. East, East Village. Village. Headliner? Headliner? Mal, Mal Hall. Hall. With com- com- performances from comics like Dante, Dante Cordova, Cordova, Mike Friedman, and Diego, and Carlos, and, and that's Thick that Pussy. Thick pussy. <laughs> All right, we're done. Goodbye. Thank you, guys. Go, go stop the. Can you stop the camera for us? That's going to be our worst received episode, but um, I think I, I liked it.